Hey guys, Omar here, broker and CEO of Alden Mortgage and Ome Realty. So a lot of people get really, really like intimidated by what your loan estimates and your closing disclosures and all of these other disclosures that you are gonna have to go ahead and sign. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a real life one, okay? So this is going to be one that we are in closing right now. And this is what your closing costs typically should look like. Now they could be a little bit cheaper depending on your title and escrow company because title and escrow are one of those things where you're able to go ahead and shop around for. So you could go ahead and go with whomever you little heart desire. So one of the key things that you should take away is always shop around for title and escrow regardless of who the lender decides that they want to you know this is the person that we usually typically go through you could go through whoever you want so you could go ahead and ask them so i know even though this beautiful face of yours is uh this beautiful face of mine is, is something that you want to see i'm gonna go ahead and take myself out of this and we're gonna go ahead and down the list of the pages uh seven pages of the closing disclosures now this is not the loan estimate i don't think i should really go into loan estimate loan estimate Actually, I take it back. Let me go back a little bit. A loan estimate, there's a variance that a loan estimate versus your closing costs. So whenever we give you an estimate of how much your uh, costs are gonna be on the LE, we could only have a 10% variance on the loan estimate to the closing disclosure to the final final closing cost so we are not allowed to have that much of a deviation so if you're ever like oh my god you know you could charge this much no we cannot charge extra we do have a little bit of a variance for instance like if we went ahead and looked on on our side and taxes were like twenty seven hundred dollars every two installments and it ended up being $2,900 every installment, then we have a, you know, we're still on the variance. So there could be minor adjustments that need to be made. And that is if you're gonna impound your account and you wanna go ahead and, you know, for insurance purposes, but let's go ahead and go on with it. I'm gonna take myself off and I'm gonna go ahead and get into this closing disclosure. So if you go ahead and take a look at it, if you take a look at it on the top hand side, it's gonna go ahead and tell you who the settlement agent, that is gonna be your, uh, your, your title company. It's gonna give your address, which you're not gonna see that. I'm gonna go ahead and blank that out. Uh, and then on the right hand side, it's gonna go ahead and give you your loan information. What kind of loan we did, it's a 30 year uh, refinance. This one's fixed, a conventional. Then you're gonna go ahead and go down to the loan terms. The loan terms, that's gonna give the amount that you're gonna go ahead and borrow. That is going to be the interest rate. The interest rate is different from what's the APR. But for this note rate that we have here, this interest rate that we are putting on it, it is at 3.875. So any one of the, you always have to look at the to right of things. Can this amount increase after closing? You wanna make sure no matter what loan product you, you, you get put into that it always says no. Then of course your monthly principal and interest, can that change? Once again, it says no. These are the most important parts of it, okay? So you gotta remember, you, you really, really pay attention to these, especially when you're going to like kind of no-name brand, I don't know, lenders, but prepayment penalties and balloon payments, unless you have an adjustable rate mortgage or you do have a product where there is gonna be a balloon payment at the end of it, or the biggest one will be the prepayment penalty. Do these features, are these features uh, part of this loan? No, we do not have a prepayment penalty. No, we are not gonna have a balloon payment. Then as you go down, you're gonna go ahead and get your projected payments. Your projected payments is going to be A, your principal and interest, and then how much we're gonna have in escrow. And then it, can this amount increase over time? Now for a lot of people, they're like, hey, can this, uh, get my, oh, my escrow uh, account, you know, they're charging me more. I get, I have to pay way, way more. Yes, it can because every single year or every other years or whenever you're whatever county that you're in when they reassess the taxes the property taxes on your in your property they can increase them which a lot of people that have purchased in 2020 2021 2022 you will notice that you might get an adjustment on your on in your escrow account because your taxes have go gone up so Going down, it says your estimated tax insurance. Of course, that will be $631.78 for this specific property. And is this gonna be an escrow? Yes, this will be an escrow. This is also an impound account. An impound account is where you go ahead and tie in your principal interest, taxes and insurance into one account. So it'll be $1,222.62 for your principal and interest, plus $631.78 for your property, uh, for your uh, taxes and insurance. 
Then you're gonna come down to the other one and you're gonna have your closing cost. Your closing cost is gonna, now this is just a brief spark note of it. This is just gonna tell you, okay, you had $5,222.15 in loan cost, which we're gonna get into the next page on that. You have $4,018.09 in other costs minus two dollars in lender credits because the credit application fee which will go on to the other side what we disclosed versus what was actually paid was different so their cash to close from their two hundred sixty thousand dollar loan amount is going to be two hundred fifty one thousand dollars seven hundred twenty seven dollars and sixty two cents now you're going to go ahead and see at the bottom where it says it's going to be from and to this is going to be two because this is actually a cash out refinance then we're going to go on to the next page and this is going to be the loan cost the loan cost this person actually had to pay a little bit to get that 3.875 percent interest rate so it actually cost them two thousand dollars and twenty cents to go ahead and buy that 3.875 percent which if you actually we did the numbers on it the next one up would have been at four percent if you did a four percent it's just really worth it over the next 360 months which is 30 years to go ahead and just pay the extra little bit because it's not much but you'll be saving yourself a couple of thousand dollars here and there then if you scroll down a little or we're going to scroll down a little bit we have an underwriting fee underwriting fee is a thousand and fifty five there are certain times that we could go ahead and waive this uh, but when we do waive this there is a little hiccup because we have to account for that loss into your apr which it's not always a good idea to go ahead and waive the underwriting fee it's always better just to go ahead and put it into it so you don't get hit on the apr and it'll be way more than what we should what we should do so services the creditor did not shop for well we went ahead and used old republic title which we have no control over there this is what they charge but as you can see over here the credit report fee which i told you that there was a two dollar variance on that uh we actually disclosed 32 dollars, so we eat the cost on that so it's actually 34 dollars then mortgage electronic registration system. Okay, so this is just called a MERS fee, which is a very, very standard fee that you have to go out and pay for your, for your property, $24.95, nothing too big. Flood certificate, we need that on every single property. Tax services, uh, $85, that's, that's, a little bit, that's a little bit on the high side, but this wholesale lender that we sell to, this is what they charge. Now the rest of these fees are going to be with Old Republic title and what they charge. Now the to title courier fee, $150. That is kind of on the higher side too. So you might wanna go ahead and negotiate that. Uh, we tried to, it just, this is the title company that the, the, the borrower actually did want. So we kind of just went with them. It was either this or Chicago title. Uh, Chicago title for some reason was a little bit higher than what we wanted it to be at, but yeah, so we just stuck with with, uh, with with Old Republic title because it's a pretty big company and they kind of like liked working with this company and I think they knew somebody from them, so we just went ahead and went on with this. Um, uh, then you have your document prep fee, which is which is fifty bucks. I usually get those uh, waved away with my my title company that I usually use, but. For the sake of argument, we're just gonna go with the fees that they charge. Uh, mobile notary fee, cause we have to go ahead, and when you're closing, there's a mobile notary that we have to send to your house and they're gonna need a wet signature. You could do certain things that are electronic, but we'll need wet signatures on a lot of them, which you have to go ahead and sign it face to face. And they charge $250. The title premium lenders coverage is what Old Republic uh, charges, which is 625. Recording fee of $255. And then the settlement or closing fee of $685. The recording fee, which is $255, that again is a little bit high. That should typically be about maybe no more than $125 to $150. But once again, this was a title company that the, the borrower wanted and uh, they requested that we use them. Um, so we went ahead and did that. And then you come down the loan cost subtotals which would be the accumulation of the origination charges, the points that we had to go out and pay, plus the underwriting fee, and then all the other title, uh, title credit reports, tax services, which all came out to $5,222.15. Other costs, which would be your recording fees. Your recording fees on taxes and other government fees, now this is just pretty much standard at 379 
homeowner's insurance. This is a homeowner's insurance. Uh, if you go right below that into the prepaids, the premium to Kemper Morker, this is the buyers or the person who's refinancing. This is actually their own uh, company. This is the one that they prefer to use. This is the one that they wanted to stick with. So that's the one that we went ahead and went, uh, just kept prepaid interest. Now these prepaids, this is what goes into your escrow account for, um, for impounding your, your, your account impounder. Of course you get your property taxes insurance and you go ahead and put that into one account. Then if you go down to G, that's your initial payments. This is going to be, of course, your taxes, your insurance, your, this is going to be your escrow accounts. So this is what you, uh, line number F is going to be what you prepay. And then this is uh, letter G is going to be what's going to be due at closing into the escrow account. So like I said, we have homeowners insurance. That's going to be $1,245.78. Uh, $1 that is what their cost is at $130.42. We're going to go ahead and do it for nine months. And then we're taking three months in reserves for city property tax, which is $1,480. $80. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and go down from there and then uh, total other costs. That's just the accumulation of all of them. We just equal all of them to one, uh, which brings our total closing costs at $9,238.24. Now we're going to go ahead and go on to the next page. Uh, your next page is going to be the payoff and payments. The payoff and payments, if you have any liens against your property, if there's anything that you wanted us to go ahead and pay, whether it's a car payment or whatever it is, this will go ahead and let the escrow know that we're going to go ahead and send money to this specific account. That will give you your subtotal in, in K. Calculations to close. This is going to go ahead and give you the difference between what we estimated versus the final. Now, if you could see right now, we went ahead and did a loan estimate for 260,000, which is the amount that they're trying to borrow. Our anticipated loan cost was $8,867, which would have been 251,133 back towards the borrower. It was actually the final cost was $9,238.24 but they got back $965.86 in an aggregated cost, which would bring their total amount that they're gonna get on the final, which will be $251,727.62. So we go about any additional information, the additional information is just gonna go ahead and say, will not allow assumption of this loan on the original term. Uh, the assumptions will just be, if you go ahead and sell your property, you cannot have this property sold to the other person. Then this is on your loan disclosures. Assumption cannot be, if you wanna go ahead and sell somebody, they can't take over the loan payment idea. They have to get they have to fi get finance on their own. Or if you wanna just, you know, do a seller finance on your own, you could go ahead and do that. And then still, you will still be responsible for paying this loan. It will all still be under your name. So, but this lender and majority of wholesalers, it's a Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac product. They do not allow you to go ahead and take any assumptions on the original loan. If you were to sell your property to somebody else, the demand feature, demand feature just means that they cannot demand the whole entire amount of the loan early repayments of the, of the loan. And then all the other stuff is pretty much, you know, partial payments. You can't do partial payments. You'll have to do it. But might I add, you might want to just go ahead and for credit purposes for credit purposes do a bi-weekly payment on your on your mortgage it'll increase your mortgage uh your your credit and it'll decrease the amount that you'll end up paying especially if you do one extra payment every single year so instead of doing actually two bi-weekly do it once a week it's it's so much better to do it once a week than to do it just monthly because you will pay it off about four years faster if you did it uh, weekly if you paid a mortgage payment split it up into four um, into every single week rather than in just doing it at the end of every single month so at the end of, uh, at the, on the other side that just pertains to the escrow amount, uh, account gives you the breakdown of your total cost of it and then we're going to go ahead and go to the 
uh, page number five. Page number five is just gonna give you your loan calculations. Now this is going to be, if you went ahead and amortized it all the way to the 360 payments, your $260,000 that you're borrowing is gonna equivalent to $445,445.85, which is a total of 184,000 in total charges that you are going to have to pay. The amount finance was 255,354 because the rest of the other, those just accumulate to the, the cost associated with title and escrow so it's always good to pay as much back as you possibly can we're not going to go down to the contact information because you really don't need to know the contact information and in whole this is pretty much what the closing disclosures look like this is what the typical fees are going to be this is the typical cost of of uh, financing that pretty much kind of sums down sums it up to what a total cost of purchasing a loan is now if you did like this content if you did want any assistance with getting any mortgaging help just go ahead and link in the description below for up to 50 percent commission rebate because god knows you want somebody to pay for all those closing costs that you just paid we give up to 50 percent commission rebate on the purchase of your next house and for zero percent listing fee that's right zero percent listing fee on selling your house link in the description below please consider liking subscribing comment hit that little ring bell notification so we can keep you up to date on anything that we have that we have going on especially mortgage rates we also give mortgage rate updates as soon as we get them i try to do it at least like three four times a week um let us know i really appreciate you guys watching thank you very much and until next video let's get on with it